Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Joey. So, I want to hop on YouTube and really kind of like share my testimony of heaven, right? But also experiencing the struggle of being a Christian and also experiencing the struggle of betraying God and also almost selling my soul and also almost like worshiping Satan and kind of like being very satanic and demonic due to the worldly pleasure that pulling me, right? So before I start, I just wanna pray and really let the Holy Spirit speak through me, you know? So Holy Spirit, please use me as a tool to spread your word, to push an agenda of Jesus Christ for more people to know about Jesus. So more people know the truth so that they can really repent, stop sinning, especially during this end time where you could be coming very soon. So, and I want y'all to let you know that like everything I say is really what I experienced, but also it's a true story. And then I don't lie about anything about this, this stuff. You know what I mean? Especially like, I want to let y'all know that like, I am nothing without Jesus and without the Holy Spirit using me. So let's start. So basically, one night I fell asleep listening to the listening to the Gospel of John. All right, and when I fell asleep during that time, I wanted I went on a thirty day fast, right right before the Lent season. And then. During that 30, 30 day fast, I was very strict with it. I did not eat that much. I fasted, I prayed. I literally was very, a very good Christian, right? So basically that night, Jesus kind of like reached out to me. And when I fell asleep, deep in my sleep, I saw a light, kind of like a tunnel of light, just very bright. And Jesus reached out to me and grabbed me and pulled me up. And I felt that I was coming out from my body almost, right? Going up towards heaven. And I asked myself, I was like, where am I going? Like, am I dead? You know, like what's going on? All right. And then Jesus t asked me like, do you want to go to heaven? I'm like, yeah, I, I do. I, I want to go to heaven. All right. So as I go up, I just keep wondering to myself like, so did I die? Like, did I have like a heart attack or something? Like, did I die? And then when I went up, I saw like a whole gate, basically a heaven's gate, right? Like, there, you know, I feel like different people might see different type of gate, but the gate I saw was a kind of like an old Roman Colosseum, right? You know, like the one that like they used in battles and stuff like that. So it's a gate like that, and it's like castle stuff. So it's like, it's a whole old school, like it, was, it looks really cool. But it felt, so the moment I went up, the gate was closed. I couldn't go in. And then, but then I felt so much peace and love. But also as I go up, there's like this love of Jesus pouring on me. But this feeling is like out of this world, I'm telling you. You cannot find this experience or this feeling on this earth. It's not on this earth. Like literally it's not. Even with like, let's say if I win a lottery ticket, I get a hundred billion dollars. I wouldn't, like that feeling compared to that, it won't be the same. Like that feeling of winning a billion dollar, it's right here. And that feeling of b being in heaven in the presence of Jesus, it's right here, right? And then I felt so much love, peace, joy, happiness, literally like all the feeling combined in one. And then what I saw next was the cross of Jesus with him like that, looking really sad. And then I saw... Our Lady, the Virgin Mary, down there, kind of like bowing down, kind of like crying, and like kind of like mourning over Jesus. And then I looked down on my left hand, I saw a cross, right? And it's kind of like I had to drag my cross in order to go to Jesus, right? When I went there, I looked up, I saw Jesus face to face. I literally like, I saw him. So that's why I knew like, if you believe in Buddhism, you believe in any other religion, 
that is not Christianity, like Christianity, you need to stop because you're worshiping other gods. And I'm saying this because I know that Buddha is not in heaven. Literally, the only person in heaven is Jesus. And through Jesus, that's how you can only go to heaven. All right, if you if you die and you don't know Jesus or you don't believe in Jesus, you need to start believing in Jesus and he is real. And I'm telling you, he is not fake or he is not this religious figure that people say that, oh, it's made up story. He is actually real. That's the only way that you can actually go to heaven. There's no other way. All right. And when I saw him, I was like, dang, he was bleeding through his heart. And then Mom Mary was crying. And then basically something was telling me to kiss Mom Mary. So I gave the Virgin Mom Mary a kiss on the forehead. The moment I did that, Jesus talked to me. He said, repent. That's all. That's all they say, repent. Even I'm a sinner. Like none of us are perfect. The only person on this earth that is perfect is Jesus. When he went down here, he's the only person, also the Virgin Mary, that are sinless. Right? And the saints and the disciples and, and like the disciples. After that, there are very few who can actually become saint saints and who remain sinless. So we as human beings are not perfect. Saint Paul too, even Saint Saint Peter betrayed Jesus three times by denying him. And after that he had to repent. And that's when he had the Holy Spirit. And that's when his whole life changed and remained sinless and he became a saint. Even us as human beings. We need to repent also, right? Even myself, I'm not perfect. I'm a sinful like person. But I have to repent every single day. I have to pray every single day. But the moment he say repent, man, that feeling of love, peace, and joy, 10 times, it multiplied. I, was like, I felt so much love. It was just amazing. And basically, that moment, Jesus brought me back into earth. Oh, wait, actually, no, I asked him. I asked him, like, I was like, am I dead? Like, am I, am I, am I gonna go inside heaven? Like, what's going on, right? I, I'm kind of confused about the whole thing. It's like, I'm, I'm outside the gate of heaven. But it's like, I asked him, like, am I dead? Or like, am I gonna go to hell? Or like, am I gonna go to purg purgatory? Like, what's going on? So I asked him, am I, am I dead? And he's like, no, it's not your time yet, son. So basically he took me back to earth and I woke up. And that day, I will never forget that night. I will never forget that feeling. I will never forget that encounter with Jesus. So that was my journey of going to heaven and coming back. And I want to share this testimony to y'all so y'all can know that you need to stop believing other gods. That's including worshiping money, worshiping satanic, demons, worshiping witchery, sorcery, worshiping Buddha, worshiping Muhammad. Literally, any other religion that is not Jesus. You need to stop. It's not real. It's all a facade. It's fake. Their teaching is not like Jesus' teaching. Let's say I was a Buddhist. I came from a Buddhist family. And I was, like, when I was a Buddhist, I was taught that you can save yourself. But that is BS. You cannot save yourself. And here, I'm going to explain why you cannot save yourself, okay? Because even... We're at, after that experience of meeting heaven and meeting Jesus face to face and him telling me to repent, I came back. I didn't repent. I literally went back to my sinful ways, but I even did worse. So now I'm going to tell you my story of almost selling my soul. So basically, I'm a, I, I, I trade stocks as my job and I'm a trader. So and, I, and basically, as my job, I help people to trade, send them signals and stuff like that. So it's very tiring on my end. But I was also experiencing a lot of up and downs and that stuff. And then basically one time I was smoking, right? I was like, and also like I was smoking marijuana. And this is the reason why that if you think smoking marijuana is not a sin, you need to reconsider it because it is actually a sin. So I'm going to tell you why. The moment I smoked marijuana, after that experience, I, I experienced a very heavy attack from the devil and the demons they literally attack me every single day before when i smoked marijuana i did not experience this but after this experience like the devil knows that now i became a threat to his kingdom on earth i know that i like he knows that he needs to take my soul away in order to keep his kingdom here alive so basically he attacked me 
And then the moment I smoke, it opens up a gateway, literally a gateway to hell. And that's where kind of like I, devil and demons whispering to me, telling me, hey, you need to send more. Hey, if you sell your soul to me, he was whispering to me like, if you sell your soul to me, worship me, I will give you a lot of money. I will give you a lot of success. Everything you do will be instant success. And I was very tempted, like, not gonna lie, like, I was experienced, I was in, like, I was broke, literally, like, I wasn't that rich and stuff like that. I was kind of, like, still a struggle trader, you know? And I thought, it's like, dang, like, I do want that. So it's like, I say, yeah, let's do it. So from that day, kind of like that, where I make a verbal deal with the devil, literally the next day, I instantly got money have capital to trade then all the trades i placed was boom instant instant money like really i was hitting take profit all that stuff right and then and basically but then the, the deal is this like when you sell your soul you wouldn't you would lose something that that jesus gave you which is peace and love so even though I was making money, even though I, I was experiencing success, that instant, but the thing that was missing from my life was I felt empty. Literally, I felt empty. I did not have the love of Jesus. I didn't have that feeling of peace, and I felt super empty. And then I was, you know, just making money, stuff like that. But it's like the devil also made you do stuff. It made you sin. He made you. He made me to have sex. He made me to do all type of shit that I never done before that I wasn't proud of. You see what I'm saying? Like literally, like kind of like every single every single thing on the Ten Commandment. He made me do all, do it all, from stealing, from really lying, literally everything. And from that point on, it's kind of I felt so trapped, right? So here is what I'm telling you, like, do not smoke. Don't do drugs, literally. And then from that point, like, you know how I went from smoking marijuana to coming over to abusing hard drugs? And this is even worse. It's opening the gate even more. Like, the moment you start doing hard drugs, let's say shroom, LSD, like, molly, like, everything. It just even make it worse. Like, like you feel, I felt so demonic in that state of being high. All right? And... And here I'm going to tell you something else too. People, a lot of people won't know about this underworld of demons and demonic and satanic stuff. They don't know because they they haven't been saved or born again. And a lot of people are walking through life being blind, thinking that they're doing the right thing. Or they're not sinning, but they actually are sinning. But the devil knows that they don't really know. So it's like, he just let them be, right? But then the people who, who do know the right and wrong, the devil comes after them. So if you're saved again or born again and you're experiencing this, you need to hang on Jesus even tighter because you are a threat to the devil's kingdom, which is on earth. Jesus' kingdom is on heaven, right? The devil controls the earth. So it's like he knows that if you know the truth and you know that what's right and wrong, you're a threat and he's going to come after you. Compared to if you don't know and you're still blind, you still walk throughout your life, so like that, sinning, but you think it's not a sin, but you you still have good, like, you see, you can still have good mor morale values. Like, I was raised with good morale values. I was taught to give back. I was taught to be nice to people. Like, I was not, like, an evil person, but I was sinning. So it's, at that time, the devil wasn't really, didn't really care trying to attack me that bad. But the moment I was saved and born again, that's when he came after me. So you got to be careful, too, right? Like... That's why a lot of people just walk there out blind. And then eventually when they die, boom. They're like, and then they, and then like they end up in hell. They start questioning like, why am I in hell? I live a good life. I, I give back, stuff like that. But then based on the book, let's say they made one mistake of, oh, you, you made an abortion, but you never went in confession, right? Or, oh, you smoked marijuana as a source of a happiness, but you didn't go to confession and repent. Because smoking marijuana and abusing it, you're basically saying that Jesus ain't shit. You're basically saying that my happiness can only come from drugs. But the truth is, like, 
happiness doesn't come from drugs. Drugs happiness only lasts for four hours. The most, ten hours. But the happiness from Jesus lasts for eternity. Eternity. So what do you want? You want a six hours to ten hours worth of happiness or eternity of happiness? So you got to ask yourself that, right? Because like, let's say I die. I, like, you know, let's say I die. Even I make a small sin, but that counts as a mortal sin. I won't make it to heaven. But pe a lot of people don't know. You need to read the Ten Commandments. You need to read the Bible. You need to get to know Jesus more. And that's the only way you can make it to heaven, right? Go to Mass. Get to know Him. Make Have a relationship with Him. And don't sin, right? And repent. Literally repent. So, now, move on. Basically, continuing with my story of kind of like how Jesus saved me, right? I've, at that time, I felt so empty. I was on a plane. Literally going to this training event. And then coming back, all right? And then, like, that 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 week, I was I made so much freaking money, literally. I never made, like, 17K in, like, two days before of trading. And that was the first time I made, like, 17K off, like, two days worth of, like, in trading. But then I wasn't proud of it because I know that that source wasn't from me. It was coming from the devil. Like, the devil gave me that power to trade better. So, basically, I felt so empty. And I thought, it's like, dang, did I lose my salvation? All right? And then, at the time, just looking out the airplane, looking kind of towards the sky, I was like, dang, what about heaven? Like, I do want to go to heaven. I don't want to lose this. I don't want to lose my soul. And I just pray. One prayer. Like, Jesus, please save me. I regret taking this deal. Please save me. And guess what? The next day, I lost everything I made. Literally, everything I made started from scratch. Zero. Zero dollars. But then, what I had back was peace. Right? So basically, the devil took all everything away from me. Jesus saved me. Took me out from that, that hell hole I was in. That, the, hell, the hell on earth I was in. Took me out, saved me. So you think that you sold your soul to get fame, to get money, to get power? You think that you cannot get out and repent? That's a lie. That's a lie that the devil tell you. So, like anyone can be saved if they believe in the blood of Jesus Christ. Anyone. So that point on, I was saved, right? And I and I came back. And it's like, I start repenting, stuff like that, and changing my life, you know? And now, I'm here at the point where I'm still a, a decent, good trader, but then I don't, I wasn't as good as before. I didn't have that superpower and stuff like that. But then one thing at least I do have is my relationship with Jesus. And the thing about God is like this. If you are faithful to Him, right? If you are faithful to God, God will always take care of you. He will never let you go hungry. Right? Like, He will have give you just enough for you to go do His purpose. But He will never, never, never let you go hungry. You just gotta believe and be faithful to Him and don't sin. See what I'm saying? Like, I do want to talk about some other sins that a lot of people are really... Like, if you notice, right, this world right now... People are worshiping Satan almost, literally. When you're sinning and when you're when you're promoting that sin and when you're worshiping other idols, let's talk about people worshiping artists, rap artists. They literally idolize rap artists. Like idolize, let's say Lil Nas. They're idolizing Bad Bunny. They're idolizing a lot of like rapper artists that they think is cool. And they don't know. That's the same because you're worshiping them. All right? And you know, a lot, a majority of those artists, the reason why they got so popular is because they sold their soul. But then they sold their soul and they don't want to go back to Jesus. They're literally trapped. And sometimes it's like the, the devil got them in a big contract. It's like, it's kind of like, they, they, but also it's like a lot of artists that want to get out, right? But then it's like they go back to their ways. 
and then they fall in love with the money and the fame, and they couldn't get out. So it's like, before you listen to an artist, you gotta listen to the lyrics and research the lyrics, what they're talking about. If the artists are promoting drugs, money, sex, gun violence, fucking bitches, right? Like, excuse my language, but if that's all they talk about, stay away from those artists. Because those those music are driving you away from God. See what I'm saying? Next thing I want to talk about is homosexuality. A lot of artists are promoting homosexuality, right? We kind of like, I do not hate gay people. I want to take, make that clear. As a brother in Christ, our job is to love them for who they are because they're brother in Christ. But our job is to also try to speak the truth because God does not like gay. It's in the Bible. Jesus said, sexual immorality, homosexuality, pride, right? Ego, let's, what's some of, like betraying, literally all the stuff that doesn't align with the value of God won't make it to heaven. He literally said that. Like, there's a verse, but I just don't have it on, on me. I don't have any Bible on me. But it's like, there's a verse in the Bible literally explaining all those sins that you think that is cool, but it's not cool. And when you make it, you won't make it to heaven. Like, gay people, like, you won't make it to heaven. And that just me speaking the truth, right? But as a brother in Christ, my job is to tell you the truth, and it's your job to either decide to listen to the truth or block out the truth. That's it. But I don't hate y'all. I don't hate. I can't hate. My job as a Christian, as a brother in Christ, is to love. That's it. But it's also to spread the truth. And it's up to you guys to decide whether you want to sin or not sin, whether to want to betray Jesus or love Jesus. That's it. So it's like me sharing you this story is very vulnerable because a lot of this thing I'm not proud of. But then the Holy Spirit been calling me to share my story, right? And today I went to church, pray about it, and then that's when I decided to decided to be in my car and just tell y'all my story and uncut. I, I didn't want to edit this stuff. Literally just make it uncut. So keep it very real and having a conversation with you as a brother in Christ and you guys has, as my brothers and sisters in Christ. Because all I care about is saving souls. Because being in hell is eternity. But, like, you don't want to go there. It hurts. It's painful. It's hot. Like, you will suffer every single day. And the suffering is ten times worse. Even, the Bible says the fire in hell is, is not the normal fire that is on earth. It's even hotter. Like, ten times, a hundred times hotter. So you do not want to go to hell. The goal is to go to heaven. All right. Now let's talk about the worship of money too and the greed of money. A lot of people. Let's, just say, let's make this clear. Money ain't bad. But in the moment you worship money, you have the greed for money. And you're trying to hoard, hoard, like hold all the money on the world. That's when it becomes a sin. Like Jesus back then. They use money as a currency to buy normal stuff. But then they use it as their necessity, what they need. And they get back all the extra stuff. That's how money's supposed to be. Not supposed to be a thing where everyone trying to gain the whole world. Like one verse say, What's a, What can a man profit when he gained the whole world but forfeit his soul? Right? Like, what's the point? Why, why forfeit your soul? Just to gain the whole world. Because you all that's all you can get right now. You would get a bunch of money right now. Fame, power, all the girls you get, drugs, literally everything you want on this world. But the moment you die, you cannot bring it with you. But then if you deny yourself right now, you humble yourself and give up those worldly pleasure right now, the moment you die, Jesus promised, He said, the moment if you live and be humble right now, you will be exalted in heaven. And you will have all the treasure in heaven. And the treasure in heaven is not money. Trust me, it's not money. The treasure in heaven is eternity of happiness. That treasure worth 
way more than money. Eternity of happiness where you can spend the rest of your life in eternity with the Lord Jesus Christ. Right? But compared to if you're trying to get the whole world now, the moment you die, you don't have anything. Literally nothing. And you'll be in hell suffering for eternity. Where you spend time with the demons and the devil, getting raped, getting cut your cutthroat, getting cut all your fingers off, burning in hell. Literally, let's say if you have sex now before marriage, you need to stop too. Like I was doing that. I was having sex before marriage. But after being saved, after going through all that experience, I came back and God saved me. I realized I need to save myself to marriage where I commit to one girl and one girl only and come and save myself until the day I can marry her. All right. And I know it's hard. It's not easy. It's not easy. It's not cool. It's not the best looking thing. It's not like people don't people think it's not cool, but don't listen to them. Listen to the Bible. Listen to Jesus. Because when you save yourself to marriage, you will learn how to love that person more than just the body itself. Not just lust, but you learn how to love. A lot of people are in a relationship, but they, don't, they do not love. All they do is lust. The moment the sex is out of the relationship, the, like, the relationship fell apart because they didn't love that person fully. They just lust after that person. Right? I need to turn on my car and charge my charge my phone. So, basically, the moral of the story is this. Take my life, take my story, right? Everything I tell you is what I experience. Take it to heart and look at your life and see that what do you want to do? Do you want to get everything right now but lose everything the moment you die? Or be faithful to Jesus and give up everything right now. But then the one thing you get when you die is happiness eternity. Living forever. Spending time with all your family members who make it, who made it to heaven. Right? So yeah. Like, honestly, that's all I really want to talk about, right? Like, just follow Jesus. That's the only way. Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the way, and Jesus is life. That's three things. Hope y'all have a great day. I appreciate y'all for listening, right? I'll see y'all in heaven, man. I hope I see some of y'all in heaven.